Welcome to 3 Minutes Fix. In this session, we will see how to do basic customization of your Do script. Open your browser and type Do Movie Streaming App, Code Canyon, and press Enter. Choose the CodeCanyon.net link. This is the official developer page. From here only, we are going to buy the app. Check out the latest version log. If you find it interesting, you can buy now, else you can wait for upcoming release. Anyhow even if you buy now, you can update later without affecting datas. So now, we are going to click add to cart button and proceed in buying. Before that, let's sign in to our account. On top right, you can see an option called sign in. Click that. If you don't have the account, you can click sign up and create one. Since I already have an account I am logging in. Now, press the cart icon. Confirm your order before purchasing. Here you have to check the quantity in car. Second is license type. For me, it's regular. There is also another license called extended which is previously discussed in our intro video. I am going to choose regular license. Now, press secure checkout button. Here, enter your billing details. Enter your first name, last name, country, address, city and state. Zip code and GST in is optional. So after entering press save and continue button. Next is payment page. Choose one of the payment gateway of your choice. You can see the amount is in US dollar so let's convert it in Indian rupee. So as per today's rate it's 2530 rupees. I am choosing visa payment gateway. Where, you need to enter your debit or credit card details. Remember, do developers only selling their product in codecanyon.com. If you found it anywhere else, don't buy from them. After purchasing, you will find your product in the download page choose and download the file. In next session we will see how to buy a hosting plan compatible with this and most of app admin panel. There are several hosting provider available online, but choosing best among them is very difficult. This session explain you how to buy a hosting plan compatible to your CodeCanyon admin panel. I personally never force you to buy from particular hosting because it's purely depend on your requirement. This video is just blueprint on how to buy hosting plan. When I google, I have found some top 10 best hosting platform. Namely, HostGator, Bluehost, DreamHost and InMotion Webhost. Also the Hostinger. Since, I already have HostGator account and plan, I will guide you, how to buy hosting using that site. Still, it's your choice to choose your hosting platform. This is HostGator homepage. As you can see they have several type of hosting plans. Namely, Linux hosting, Windows shared hosting, VPS server hosting, dedicated Linux server hosting and finally dedicated Windows server hosting. If your startup you can start with Linux shared hosting. They have splitted the plan in four types like startup to business plan. In simple words, in starter plan you will have limited SSD space and in rest of the plan, you will have unmetered SSD space. For now I am choosing one month period as a payment mode. You can choose up to five years bulk payment. Before buying, remember you will also require to have a domain name. So, let's choose domain registration under domains menu. Type your site name, I am typing gospel app, and let's try to find, if that domain name is available. Almost all the top level domains are available, I am choosing, gospelapp.in as my domain, so now let's go back to our hosting page, now proceed in buying. It's add-on security feature for your site, it's optional to have first one, other two options are, recommended so, I am choosing them. Here, you can enter the domain name, that we have checked, for now, I am choosing, gospel app and in drop down list choosing, dot in, now press next. Since we already checked, the availability of domain, we don't have any last minute surprise, so let's continue in purchasing. Here check all the things that we are marked are there in the cart, and proceed in buying. In total it's showing 3594 rupees, in case you don't want the add-on you can remove from here itself. So as a final price, you will have 765 rupees, if you're satisfied, you can proceed by pressing continue button. So the next session is on, how to open the Android source code, in Android Studio, so, let's proceed with next session. First, let's extract all the files from zip file. Now, inside Android source folder, 
just right-click and extract our source file. This is the file that we are going to modify. Next open Android Studio. For this, it recommend to use latest version. I am using Android Studio 4.2.2 version. Choose, open an existing project, and choose your file location. It will show some error. For now press OK. We will fix it. Gradle shows some error. There is easy way to fix this, just follow me. Go to File menu and press Project Structure. Under the Gradle plugin version, delete the value and add 4.2.2 as new value, that's nothing but our Android Studio version, now press OK button. After Gradle successfully changed, our Android Studio project is ready to do further modification. Once you have buy the hosting, you will get access to cPanel site, just open the browser, and go to the site URL, that is provided in your purchase email id. Now, search for the text subdomain. Reason I personally suggest for subdomain host is, for security purpose, in case, you're planning to have a web TV, then the step is totally different, we will try to cover it in another tutorial, if God willing. So, now press, the subdomain link. Here, type some easy to remember name, like admin.domainname.com, make it simple, so all of your company staff can easily remember it. I am creating, admin.preagshop.ga as my subdomain. Once, successful creation of subdomain, you can press the back button. Here, under the files menu, choose file manager option. Now, choose the domain name that we created. Before that, let's separate and extract our admin panel from the zip folder. In case, developer released a new version, you can simply, upload the update folder. For now, we will extract only the admin panel folder and zip it. Remember, most FTP providers support only the .zip format and not the .rar format. So, if you have WinRAR, just choose .zip format and compress it. On your file manager, choose the upload button to upload our zipped file. Now, press the blue color select the file button to browse it. It will take few minutes to upload the file. Refresh the FTP page. Now right click and extract the admin panel folder. Now inside the admin panel folder, we have a compressed file. We just need to move the file to the main subdomain just follow what I do. Press the move button. Now just remove the subfolder name. And choose the move button. Now, right-click the folder and press Extract. Usually, servers take at least 60 seconds to 30 minutes, to make our subdomain online. Even if we visit our subdomain now, we will not able to see the install page, so, I pause the video for now. Go to the domain name that we created or copy it from the text box. You will mostly get blank page error because we have to navigate to slash install folder. So type, install and press enter. We will get loading page error. When I asked HostGator support, they told it's due to .ht access file. Now, right click and choose rename option. Add a letter and press enter. Now, refresh the page to see the changes. Let's go back to our site and press refresh button. Your site should come to active now. If you still face any issue, contact the support immediately. Depending on the server speed, your site will load it. This is our welcome page. Here our script. We'll check if all the requirement met by your server. If OK, you can press the next button. In this page, you need to enter your database details. I will guide you on it. On our cPanel page, find the menu called MySQL database and choose it. First, create new database. Type your desire name for it. Now press Create button. Copy the database name with the server prefix. Paste it in our install page. By default, hosting will be localhost so I type that also. Next is username, so go back to our cPanel and create the username for our database. Now, type the username of your choice. I always recommend my user to generate database password. 
So, press the Generate button and copy the password. Press the Use Password to enter it in Password field of database. Now press Create User button. Before copying the username, first let's paste the password in our install page. Now copy the username with its server prefix and paste it in our install page. Before pressing continue, go back to our database page. We have to link our username to the database. This is very important step. Under add the user to the DB, choose our database name and username. Now press the add button. Under privilege page, choose all privilege checkbox and press OK button. Now press the next button. This page is for creating your admin account. Remember the username and password that you enter here. Even though your password is shown here as plain text, it will be encrypted in database. Agree the terms and condition and press finish button. Now, enter the username and password, press submit button. This is the dashboard of our admin panel. We will see more about this in upcoming session. For now, our admin panel is ready to be used. Previously, we have seen how to add admin panel to our hosting website. In this video, we will see how to customize our source code and adding Firebase into it. First, let's change package name. Changing the package name is important and it's come in handy if you want to upload your app in Play Store. Press the Java folder. Now press the com folder. Here it's written as do, which is nothing but their company name, so we will change to ours. Right click the do folder and choose refractor option. Now under this choose, rename option. In the warning dialog, press rename package. Now, enter the name of your company. I am typing it as, Gospel TV. After that, press the refractor button. In the same way, right click the Android folder, and choose refractor. Under that choose the rename option. In warning dialog choose, rename package name. Under, rename dialog, choose your package name, which is nothing but our app name. I am typing it as gospel app. In case, your changes does not reflect, best option is to restart the app. To restart, press the file menu, under that choose invalidate cache and restart option. Now press, just restart. After the restart, you can see the changes has been successfully applied. Next is linking our app to the backend, that is, to our admin panel. Before that, we will change the package name in our Gradle. Scroll down and expand the Gradle script folder. Under this, choose build.gradle. We have to change application ID to com.gospeltv.gospelapp. After that, Press Sync Gradle button. Wait for Gradle to sync. Next, unfold the CPP folder. Choose app underscore config dot CPP file. Using this file, we will link the admin panel to our app. For that, we will require server URL and API URL. So let's find it. Log in to our admin panel. From the left menu, scroll down until you see a menu named Settings. Press it to expand additional menu. Under this, choose API settings. Now, copy the API server URL just by pressing it. Go back to Android Studio. Paste the copied URL under the server URL. Let's do the same for our API key. Copy the API key from admin panel by just clicking. Paste it in our Android Studio config page. So, now we have successfully linked admin panel to our app. Next, we have to link our app to Firebase. Go to your browser and type Firebase and in search result, choose first link. You will be automatically logged into your Google account. Now press get started button. This is how your Firebase homepage look like. Now we don't have any active project. So first, let's create it. Now press the create a project button. In this page, enter the name for your project. You can see the project name is suffix by some number. 
so let's change to a readable name. Renaming it to Gospel App 2022. Press Save and the Press the Continue button. In this step, keep everything as default and press Continue. Here select the default account for our Firebase. Now press Create Project button. After the successful creation, press the Continue button. This is your personal Firebase dashboard. Using this, you can manage user accounts. Using Firebase as our database. Real-time Firebase is backend of most of App Company. For us, we are using our own PHP backend. Storage is where you store the files and hosting is where you can host static website. Now on right side, you can see there is few option. There is Unity icon, iOS icon and Android icon. We also have web icon where you can link your website to. Now, choose Android button from it. Here it asks us to register our app. First option is package name. Remember, both package name and app ID are same. Under Gradle setting, choose build Gradle file. Now, copy the application ID from here by selecting it. Go back to Firebase page and paste it under package name text box. Now choose the nickname for your app. It does not need to be professional. For now, app signature is optional, so I am not covering it. Press the register app button. Now download this JSON file. We have to upload it into our Android Studio to link it with Firebase. Now copy this file by right-clicking and press copy option. We have to place this file in core of the project. Right-click inside Gradle file and choose show in Explorer. This is easiest way to find the core file. Now delete the existing JSON file and place our newly created JSON file. Now, we have successfully linked our app to Firebase. Now press next button in our Firebase. It's asking to add Firebase Gradle setting into our app Gradle. Fortunately, our do developer has made this task very simple by adding it already. So, press continue to console button. Congratulations, you have successfully linked your app to Firebase. We will see more about Firebase in upcoming sessions. So, let's go back to the app. Now, let's try to run the app. Your app mostly show crash message, but don't worry, I am running it to show how we can fix it. As we already discussed, it show crash error. Don't worry, I have found the core reason for this issue. But I will show it in action. When we analyze the log report, it point out on our config file. Click the blue link to navigate there. After page load, you can see the color turns to red, which indicates that there is issue in this lines of code. Just go back to our CPP file. Scroll down, the reason for crash is due to mismatch of our application ID. As given under tagline, we have to change the default package name to our newly created package name. Now just go back to our Gradle, copy the application ID. Now open the notepad, paste our app ID, replace the dot with underscore. Now copy this. Go to our CPP file and paste it under each method. Just follow my steps closely. Select the text after the Java underscore until Android. Now paste our copied text. You can note the change of color, which indicates we are in the right path. Let's do the same things for all other methods. Once we successfully changed, we get yellow color highlight. So let's go back to our app config file. Congratulations, you have successfully cleared the error. Let's try to run the app. You will certainly able to run the app without any issue.
As I told earlier, UAP is loading now without any issue. This is how our default login page will be look like. It also have sign up page, so user can sign up immediately after launching app. Signing with Google is one of best option provided by most of app. It is also loved feature of many app users. We will see how to connect it in upcoming sessions. I am not logging in because we have yet to add the movies to our backend. So we will first see how to add the movies to our admin panel in next session. In this session, we will see how to add movies to our app from admin panel. Now log in to your admin panel. On right side, unfold the movies menu. Now press add movies button. Here, you can enter the movie number. For that press this link. It will take you to TMDB website. On top right press the search icon and search your desire movie. Copy the movie ID and paste it in text box. Now press fetch button. Movie details has been added successfully. Now press OK button. It will automatically take you to next page. Here, under the label, type English. For order, type 1. For quality, type 1080p. For size, type size of the video file. Next is source type. Developer has added multiple source options. For now we will add MP4 as source. Next is adding URL. I have few example video URL for this session. We will copy the link and paste it in our box. Status, leave it publish. For now I add it as free video. Optional feature like intro skip. Let's add it for this example video. Intro start time can be zero. And end time can be around 40 seconds. Now press the add button. Congrats we have successfully added our first movie. Same way we are going to add our other movies. If you want to use other storage type, then method is simple. You need to change the type as YouTube and add the YouTube URL. To see the added movies, just press the All Movies menu. Now we have successfully added 5 sample movies to our app. Let's run our app and see if the movies are added correctly. To run the app, you have to press the green triangle button. Here, we get our default splash screen. Now let's log in using our admin panel login details. We have been successfully logged in. Now, you can see all the five movies has been added to our app. Let's choose one of the movie. Now, press the play button. Depending on the speed of the internet, the app will load the movie. Now, let's press the skip button to save our time. Our movie is working perfectly. 
The issue with this MP4 video is, you cannot switch the quality in between. That's why most developers use the HLS stream, in other words, it's M3U8 format, which is also available in our source type on the admin panel. Let's try another source video which is our YouTube video. YouTube video has one feature to select the quality. Let's choose 720p for now. Our YouTube stream also working very well. The developer also added a feature like double tab to seek in all the players, which I forgot to mention in our intro video. You will get continue watching sections like this. This will come in handy if you want to watch the video next time. Next, we are going to enter into an important section, that is, customizing this app entirely.